Well, it's a beautiful day. I'm on my way out to the First Nations style permaculture garden, the Three Sisters. I just thought I'd do a little pan around and show you what the whole garden area here looks like. That's the square foot garden beds over there. Hopefully this area is where I will start this week to build my new greenhouse. It's about the only flat piece of ground out here. So down there's the chimney, my chair for sitting and enjoying the fire. And this is the pathway that I use to come out to this garden and I call my secret garden because you can't see it from the house. I'll start with a general shot of the the bed that I'm growing my six uh, Three Sisters mounds in. As I've said before, I'm growing it in a permaculture manner. So only the mounds where the squash, pumpkins, corn, and beans are planted are, are being watered or, or um, weeded or anything. The rest of it is just being allowed to grow with whatever comes up. And I'm fascinated by what's coming up. I'll give you some close-ups now of some of the wild items that are coming up in this bed. First is a digitalis foxglove. Uh, well, it's not. A, I've seen taller ones. I guess it's probably about four feet tall. But it's in full bloom. Very pretty. Just behind the foxglove is a verbascum, a wide, a wild uh, mullen. And they will. I've seen them. Some of these go nine, ten feet tall. This is starting to have its blossom bud on the top, and it's probably four feet tall. So. I don't think it's going to be a, a record height, but it'll soon have its yellow blossoms and that will attract more pollinators to the uh, mounds of, of vegetables. Next is Rose Campion, uh, one of my favorite garden flowers, but seems to have mostly disappeared from my garden and comes up in various places in the wild. It doesn't throw its seeds, it has hundreds of seeds and they just sort of drop, so I presume that it must be birds that have uh, have moved the seed over into this garden. There are several blossom spikes here, and this is the only one that's actually bloomed out yet, but they're very pretty. And I'm guessing that this is a sunflower. I'm sure it must be what it is, although it's got two two blossom buds coming on it, and it's very short. Um, I feed the birds all winter, and a lot of sunflowers, different kinds of sunflower seeds, so I guess a bird must have brought this out, or possibly even a squirrel might have come out and dug it into the soil, but I'm going to have a sunflower in one corner of the garden here. And this is a potato plant, which I did not plant any potatoes here this year. Actually, I haven't grown potatoes in this bed for at least five years. I grew what was called, I think, German fingerling potatoes. They're four or five inches long and sort of cylindrical. They're not much bigger around than your finger. Uh, the claim from the literature that I got along with them when I planted them was that they, they're used by Germans to make potato salad. Well, I'm sorry, in my opinion, that must make a miserable potato salad. <laughs> I didn't like the things. Uh, no matter how long you cooked them, they were still hard. They never actually did get all that soft. They weren't crunchy or anything, but they were sort of like a tough, hard thing. I, I didn't like them, didn't eat them. And I have pulled them out of here every year since, and they still come back. So they're almost impossible to get rid of. I probably should dig that up, but that's actually coming right up through one of the mounds, so I'm going to leave it. I guess I'll have some more fingerling potatoes. I'll try them again this fall, see if I like them any better. Well, other than that, there are all sorts of other wildflowers. They're not in bloom here. I see evening primrose. There's raspberry bushes, various kinds of grasses, clover in bloom. So it's a... A real mixture in the bed here, but I'll now give you a look at some of the the mounds. Now the squash and pumpkins are starting to run. You can see there they're leaving the bed and coming out into the rest of the garden. I'll have a look at this one mound. I think that probably explains this a bit. You fell on the ground. I'll have a look at this one mound that probably explains pretty much what the rest of them are doing. I did just measure uh, one of the corn plants this morning, so I have an idea how tall it is. 
and they are, are short. Uh, the tallest one that I could find here was a little over 40 inches, about 102, 103 centimeters. Uh, I suspect that's probably about the height that the First Nations people got for their, their corn back when they were growing in our hybrids have, have made it taller and more robust, but the uh, reason here is unknown. This is supposed to be much taller. Somebody suggested in a comment on my last update that it was because of the cold weather uh, the plant has rushed into bloom no matter how tall it is. I think that makes sense. That in a combination that uh, the, most of the corn, uh, the larger corn plants, the ones that are in bloom now, were uh, started quite a while ago in the house from seed and brought out and transplanted. So I think the the plant has probably just reached also a, a time in its life where it's, it's supposed to reproduce. So anyway, it'll be interesting to see what happens here in the center. You can see them or not. They're the corn plants that I uh, planted in the garden from seed. These ones here, they're now, oh, I don't know, getting close to a foot tall. And the, I put beans around them a little week ago, and the beans are up and starting to grow. So it would be interesting to see now that there's warmer weather, and these ones were actually planted in the garden, if they go taller than the uh, ones that were started in the house and transplanted out. But anyway, I'm very pleased with the way the squash and pumpkins are taking off. And I'll give you a look at the beans here. doing what they're supposed to do. They're wrapped around the corn stalk and gone all the way to the top and they're soon going to be above the corn stalk because it's not going to get any taller. But I mean, right, there's buds there. The beans haven't haven't bloomed yet. And on that same uh, plant you can see the the uh, where the beans gone right to the top but also the tassel where it's starting to, to bloom. And down below it see just in there, see that some of the silk. Uh, each plant seems to have two corn cobs on it. Uh, so far, maybe that's all they have. I, don't, I can't remember. I haven't grown corn so many years, but the silks and the, the tassels are out, so I am going around and uh, tapping the plant with a stick every once in a while to knock pollen down onto the silk to make sure that I get some uh, corn out of this. Anyway, it's going along very well. I'm quite pleased with the results so far. The uh, camera is still set up, doing uh, time-lapse photography. We had heavy wind and rain yesterday, and I come out and the camera had sort of been reoriented. I hope that that's all that happened was yesterday, so there's going to be a, a bit of wonky film in there where it sort of goes off off the uh, the topic, I think, but it's realigned now and looking down on uh, that particular mound, which has got the beans also almost to the top of the of the corn. So that goes until the 29th of July, and after that I will post the time lapse. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments that you'd like to make about the Three Sisters Garden, or perhaps if you're doing the same, you could uh, post a a, uh, a video to my channel showing everybody how yours is working. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Well, to close this little video off, I'll give you a little look at my little corner of Provence. Well, I guess it'd be more accurate to say my little corner of England, since this is English lavender, not French. I've tried growing the French lavender here, but it just won't survive our winters. This is mostly Hidcot, um, which is a, an English lavender, one plant of the actual one that they just call English lavender, and the rest are all Hidcot. There's a slight difference. I know which plant is the is the English lavender one, and it is a bit different. But they're not really in full bloom yet. There aren't any bees because they haven't opened. But uh, I'm quite pleased with it. This is its second year, the first year that it's really bloomed. So looking quite nice. Let's talk to you all later. Thank you very much for watching my video.